Well, it's uh, 5.30 on day four, and I'm gonna try and um, pack up a little bit of camp and get dirt down to the flats so that we can do a hunt in the morning and then come straight back to camp and have camp ready to pretty much pack up, move on and climb up. We've got the big climb today. Yeah, frosty morning. Look at all the ice on these boots. Putting them on has not been easy. Right. The shoe races are like cardboard. That's where we're going to climb up today, to the top. You can see where there's been a little bit of rubbing of the, of the mud on that punga tree. I don't remember seeing that stirred up the other day, but then again, I wasn't paying that much attention, but that's that's been stirred at some point. Right, well, the plan for this morning um, changed a little bit. Dirk's gone down to hunt the river flats. I've gone up the river from camp because the wind's sinking, and I just felt that was a better option. Check out these two stag marks. They're the same animal. Would have just been rearing up on its iron legs. Preaching on this preach tree. I might do a bit of a search for some cast antlers around here. Beautiful spot. I wouldn't say it's the freshest bed within the last week anyway, but certainly not not days. Well. J. Carl Escalating Services is finished, has not revealed the casting. So, I was very lucky with that other one. Very lucky indeed for any of you that search for castings, can probably attest to that. It's very rare finding a pair of that ones. Look at this for a bed. So I absolutely love sleeping under that. It's all fern above you. Surprisingly insulated and keep you free from moisture. Not quite pissing rain, but it'll be the next best thing from the rain jacket. Just packing everything out of the Stony Creek fly, the hump, the bivy fly. We had our heads at the top, our feet down here near the bottom where you can see climbing out and she was a bit lumpy. <laughs> you can see all the grass clods that we flattened down so it wasn't exactly flat but that's okay. You know she was a frosty night last night when I've come back and it's nearly 8.30 and you can still see the frost bag. Yeah, good. Um, so we followed the creek down to the main river and followed that and then just sat on a, the river flat for about you know, probably half an hour, 45 minutes, just as the sun peaked out. It was, it was quite cold in that um, flat. You could see still there's ice on the, um, on the fern leaves and stuff like that, so I waited. Um, there, nothing, so I decided to follow the river, cross the river, beautiful, lots of sign, soft underfoot, really grassy as well, saw a wallow, preach trees, sign, kept on following that, but very, very slowly, the sun was on my left as well, um, up high still, so I could, I could see directly in front of me, and uh, I stopped and, and glassed and saw something orange and I remember something that Jamie said yesterday he said oh I saw the orange and I looked and I thought no that's not a fern that's something else that's too orange and I watched and watched and watched and watched probably about 150-200 meters away 
and then suddenly it moved and I knew okay it was a hind so I slowly 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 made my way up wind was right in my face so that was perfect as well and um, but she was in the thicket still didn't feed out um, yet so just slowly made my way up got into about 150 meters sat there watched her because I hoped that you know there would be a stag following her out um, but nothing and eventually she just um, she just you know fed away um, back into the thicket again didn't know about me didn't hear me didn't smell me yeah so it was really nice yeah backpack hunting is a test of oneself there is no benchmark other than that which you put upon yourself a personal test of your own ability to overcome the mental and physical challenges that the mountains will ask of you as an individual let alone as a hunter a test of your resilience and persistence to push on even when the going gets tough. Livingston, I presume. It's funny, you know, I never really truly understood the true meaning of character building until I started backpack hunting in the Southern Alps of New Zealand as a teenager. A place where the terrain puts you in uncomfortable situations where you simply have to grit it and bear it, like it or loathe it. And it's in those uncomfortable situations where you find your true colours. Those resilient characteristics that we all have find a way of shining through even the most testing of circumstances. And although this backpack hunt was not in the most testing of terrain, I was acutely aware that Dirk, being from a relatively flat continent, would need to dig deep on this climb out. He would need to crawl into his control room and take charge of his mental and physical faculties which would be put under load for most of the day. does not do it justice. The control room is our ability to tune out of everything that does not matter or contribute to the task at hand and focus on placing one foot in front of the other, onwards and upwards. All right, so Dirk and I, it's now day four and we're heading up the ridge to get up onto the main ridge and then we're gonna I think we'll probably set up the camp up top and get in an evening hunt it's only midday now we left camp at 11 o'clock down below and we're just climbing straight up this dry spur it's actually relatively okay it's a little bit um, thick in places and these arrows keep getting caught it's a real pain Dirk before was telling me that I could buy his Splaza rifle 375 H&H for five dollars before so I think that's how... Uh, but that was at the bottom, eh? Yeah. <laughs> now it's two dollars. At the top it's eight thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. We're, uh, we're making good progress. Feels good to finally get some elevation. Sun's come out now. You can see we're getting up a bit higher. hurt locker right now. This one fall, all the broken one fall trees falling down that you have to climb over. All these trees seem to bloody hang out down the slope because of all the snow during the winter. So you're walking up into branches that are falling into your face. Tie <sighs> tying up my arrows. This is where the smorgasbord of pain and suffering begins. Ben, you'd love this. It's quite hot now too because it's just gone at one o'clock. Mother Nature's cruel. That can't be more than a few 
weeks old, a couple of weeks old, maybe even less. Either maybe it was too cold for it or maybe it's one of two, like twins, and the hinds kicked it off. Or, oh, very unlikely, someone's come down here and shot the hind. I'd highly doubt that. We're so close to cresting this ridge, but it's just really thickened up and it's got a pinch steeper. So that leading spur has come to a, a steep incline. And then what'll happen is it'll kind of shoulder out before we get to the ridge. So it should taper off. What song did you have going up the hill then? Eye of the Tiger. But I taught the kids, there's a little hill up to our house. Whenever we run it, I always tell them, no, no, don't think about the whole hill. You just break it down. You go one, two, one, two, one, two. Before you know it, yeah, there. you're halfway, then you're top. So, that, so you always have to break it down. Yeah. I think what we'll probably do is we'll actually carry on up this main ridge climb up back to the truck and put in a hunt in some more open terrain because this bridge is really quite to be quite frank you know look at all this windfall it's just surrounded by it you can't not make so much noise look at this for a view beautiful I mean we've come from straight down in there I think Dirk should be pretty proud of himself. We've still got probably a good hour and a half before we actually get up on top. Probably two hours actually if you're going to be playing it safe. Okay, so you can see up a lot higher now. Be getting close to a thousand metres soon. Up from 500. I'm just dropping down to get some water. You picked this on purpose, eh? This is proper backpack hunting at its simplest. There is no tracks, we're just bush bashing through windfall, stuff that's horrible. Sorry, I like swear for any of you families that watch this with kids. I know my kids don't want to hear me swear. So we are, I can see where the, the bluff, uh, bluffs, cliffs, bluffs start soon and we're going to have to climb up and that's our last climb before we've broken the vertical climb and then we've still got 2.3 kilometers to the car oh, i've just been reading a message from andre on the inreach talking about the climb and said that we left camp at 11 and that we're making fairly good progress and he just said that he's been doing a podcast about it what was feature in the podcast just today so we still talk about this trip you know and Dirk and I will talk about this trip too I mean these are the kind of trips that are character building for yourselves and you know foster a really strong kinship because you both go through the same uh, mental and physical challenges the good thing is this time I'm feeling well hydrated whereas the time before you know I was dead diring towards the end I was mentally gone. You can feel it now. It's not quite okay. This is work. But... It's okay. Ends inside, eh? Somewhere down there. That's Dirk. Just 
follow that broken branch. This is definitely the worst of it here. No, I'm just saying this is the worst of it. This broom, I remember it last time vividly. It grows out at a parallel. So you're walking up into it. Look at it all reaching out at you, into your face and eyes, into your ears, catching my arrows. We've come from right down the very bottom of that valley. Way down there. Hang on. Down there. Boom. And that folks is Victoria. At its finest. See how high plains in the distance. Looking south. Well, we came out from down there. And that catchment down there. of the world yet <laughs> Wow, well, look at this for a view over here straight down I mean that is actually literally <laughs> straight down these bluffs into where we were hunting for the last few days so we're on our final ascent and I tell you there's been a few expletives Dirk's just been telling me a South African word that I will not repeat <laughs> but I was saying the English version a lot <laughs> Very appropriate for this bush <laughs> I reckon Well that is the climb done that's the hill broken <sighs> It's just on on 4.30 and we left camp at 11 so that's been five and a half hours nearly of slogging uphill. I tell you what, if any of you 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds out there that don't think this is doable, Dirk's 50 years old and slugging away. I mean he'll be hurting but now I know a lot of you do do that. You know, get out in the hills and climb around but for those that think it's um, not doable I challenge you to give it a go because it is doable requires a bit of blood sweat and tears and you know you'll grow so much from it as a human being and for any of you young aspiring 20 year olds you know strapping young men fit and ready to roar off into the hills this is your kind of country down here that's definitely a 20 year old's dream. You go down and explore. Climb, sidle, descend, repeat. Look, it's tough as hell. But the views are to die for. This is what you have to do if you chase the samba. But it's hard work. I can understand it's not everyone's cup of tea, so yeah. But we I think we did well. Had a long day climbing most of it, so yeah, happy to be here now.